Hello everyone, my name is Tony Laporta and welcome to Road to Indy TV, off the road or in studio. We're here at Stageworks in Tampa, Florida, in between Road to Indy races. Coming up in a few weeks, the series heads to New York for the Watkins Glen Indy Lights race. And then before you know it, the season will be over, just a few days later when we head to Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca. But right now, as I said, we're in between races and with no tracks to go to or visit, well, we brought the personalities to us. Joining me in studio right now, we've got Pro Mazda driver from Team Pelfrey, Pato Award, via Skype from San Antonio, Texas. And then in studio with us, to my closest left, I've got uh, Jonathan George, better known as JJ from JJRD. He's here in Tampa with us. And then the one and only USF 2000 singer known round the paddock, ladies and gentlemen, Luke Gavin from J Motorsports. So guys, I'll open it up. Pato, first of all, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us, buddy. I'm good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. We are great. We are uh, happy you could break some time away in your in your morning in San Antonio to join us. JJ, how are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. Of course. Anytime we get to have the uh, the JJ. Oh, the JJ. That's what we're calling it now. It's that's <laughs> what they're calling it, my man. Gavin, Mr. Luke, how are you? Good. Yeah, happy to be here in uh, Tampa, Florida. It's nice and humid. You know, just perfect. always humid. You're fr but you live. Don't you live in St. Pete? Yeah, I mean... So it's humid there too? Yeah, it still doesn't get any better though. I thought it, it's, I feel like it's a little worse here in Tampa. Wow, that's, I think it's just humid everywhere it's in the awesome. state of Florida. It's great. It's the greatest state in the country. Boy, you and I have I different opinions it. on that. I love it. But it, it really is fun to have you guys here. Uh, with no races to go to, no, no traveling to do, it's a little strange. Uh, but you guys were able to join us here at Stageworks in Tampa, and it's going to be fun. It's our first in-studio show of the season, and we're really happy you guys are here. Uh, we want to get going. Pato, first of all, uh, we're going to kick off with kind of the season overview. And you're the one on Skype. You're away from us right now. So give us a season overview right now, first for yourself, and just tell us how 2016 has gone for you. Um, well, I, did, I think now I can say it's been kind of like a roller coaster. We started the season off great, and then... Um, We've had a few problems the past few race weekends with uh, you know, some technical issues and um, didn't seem to be fixed by mid-Ohio, so um, the team is working hard to fix them for, for Laguna Seca and uh, so now that I'm not even in, in front of the championship that I can have a car to fight the championship with. Well, you know, he, he kind of sounds down and it's understandable, but you, we are talking to the man who rattled off six of the first seven races of the year with wins. So Pato Ward, he's modest, but he's had a great 2016 so far. JJ, you're certainly on a different end than the drivers here between Pato and Gabin. You know, you are a driver coach and you've worked with a lot of the names in the series. I want to ask you, how has 2016 gone for the series, in your opinion? What's the racing been like this year as a guy who's not competing in it as a driver? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, this year in particular has been one of the greatest years um, that I've been involved in this in the Road to Indy. Uh, the competition in, in most of the classes throughout, uh, you never know really who's going to win. You know, there could be, you know, five, six guys that can take the win on, on all of them. So from a, a coaching perspective, it's exciting to see that level of talent. There's a lot of guys from Europe coming over. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to go to Laguna and see what's, uh, you know, how it's going to all shape out. That Mazda weekend <laughs> at Laguna Seca is going to be a lot of fun. Pro Mazda's got three races. USF 2000 and the Lights have their last two races of the year. And that takes us to USF 2000 driver Luke. Uh, season's been, you know, very up and down. I think Pato said his has been a roller coaster. Describe your 2016 for us, please. Um, I mean, if Pato's has been a roller coaster, I feel like mine's probably been like a bigger roller coaster because. <laughs> Uh, we've just had a lot of sort of uh, sort of technical issues and some issues with uh, like race control and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I've been really happy to work with Jay. He's put together like an amazing car for me. You know, we we were one of the quickest in Indy in qualifying and have been right there at Barber. And you were know, the quickest in Indy. <laughs> yeah, Pato yeah. does bring up a good yeah. point, and we're going to get to that a little bit. You the quickest in Indy, and then you blew the checkers. We're going <laughs> to hey, we're gonna get to that in a little bit. We actually have that in the show a little bit later on, but Pato, Pato, <laughs> can't wait Pato, gives us, <laughs> so Pato gives us a good teaser yeah. as he enjoys breakfast in, in San Antonio. But Luke, just yeah, wrap up what you were saying about 2016. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super happy with the, the choices we uh, I've made, and uh, you know, uh, coming in late to the season, I signed with uh, J Motorsport two weeks prior to St. Pete and we had zero testing and sort of went into uh, St. Pete race pretty blind um, and we were able to come away with fourth and fifth and then 
we uh, realized the engine was down on power, so we switched that out, and then at Barber, we were able to come away with fourth and second. So, you know, we, we knew the whole time that we had a fast car, and I had a lot of trust in Jay, and, you know, to make it happen um, was pretty uh, sort of a blessing in disguise. Yeah, it really has been, I think, a, a roller coaster for both you and Pato, and, and certainly you, considering that you guys, you know, were in search of funding right before Toronto, and that race was in jeopardy of almost not happening. So that kind of puts me to my next point, and we'll go in reverse order now. Uh, we'll start with you, Luke, because Pato's knee-deep in breakfast right now, and I don't want to interrupt him. Um, the biggest surprise of the season so far for you guys, what has been your biggest surprise maybe of 2016? Uh, the biggest surprise was uh, the Indy weekend for sort of two reasons. Um, I guess we'll get into that a bit later. Yeah. Um, but also sort of just being able to come up with the funding. We had a, a, a private investor get me to Toronto. I'm still looking for funding to get to Laguna Seca, but you know, um, my parents have been sort of coming up with as much as they can to get me through the season, and that's sort of, you know, the best thing that I can take away from this. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, the, it's not a good surprise, but it's, it's been surprises that you didn't see, and you guys have overcome them, which is the most important part. JJ, same question for you. And, uh, you, again, from drivers you've worked with maybe this season, I know you've been heavily involved with RC Enerson. I've seen you with Bullardi. Uh, what's just been maybe the biggest surprise to you, the thing you didn't expect happening this year that has, in fact, happened? Well, I mean, coming into uh, to 2016, uh, I would say RC is probably the biggest thing, the uh, biggest surprise, you know, with, you know, being where we are now in IndyCar and uh, having one weekend under our belt. Uh, we've been together with RC for six years now working Wow! Uh, right away since go-karts. And so it's been a progress of getting there and, uh, you know, to, you know, middle of the season, make the move to IndyCar. I think the biggest surprise was to realize how ready we were when we got there. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, we, we said, I remember sitting down with him before we even got to, to the first weekend thinking, you know, what are, what do you think we're going to stack up? How are we right. going to be? And, uh, you know, after the first day of practice at, at Mid-Ohio, we were, we were, we had that same conversation. We both go, we, we surprised ourselves. You right. Know, we said, Man, we, we're ready. You know, yeah. we, everything we've been doing on the road to Indy got us here and we are prepared. You know, so I would say that's, uh, you know, because you always have that kind of feeling of hesitancy. You know, it, you know, can you do it? Can you not? Right. And, you know, um, not finishing the season in, in Indy Lights kind of made that, you know, like maybe we need that to finish that year to do it. But, you know, we, we spent um, four years, four and a half years in, in a road to Indy and we were ready. You know? So what would you say of those two things? Because I took, I took kind of two different surprises out of that. Would you say the biggest surprise for you guys this year has been how, how fast you were off the truck in St. Pete? Or the fact that you guys didn't continue on the Indy Lights calendar post Indianapolis. What, what to you was the bigger surprise? I think the bigger surprise, uh, aside from from those two things you mentioned, is that when we were when we when we got to IndyCar, we were ready. You know, we had the pace. That's um, a good surprise. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of little things that we needed to still that I wish that we had done a little bit more of when mm -hmm. we're doing the the road to Indy stuff. But it just gives me a, a, a more clear view of what I need to do to new guys coming in. But you know, it's we're definitely prepared. Fair so, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. So Pato, kind of the, the same question to you. Hopefully, uh, we've given you some time to to digest here a little bit. Uh, what has uh, what has been maybe the bigger surprise to you in 2016? And again, you know. I think rattling off six wins straight out of the first seven races shocked a lot of people. Did it did it surprise you, or did you expect that coming into this year? Um, I didn't expect to win six out of the first seven races, but um, I was expecting to be at the front. Um, I last year I pretty much had the speed, but um, sometimes I just got really unlucky, especially um, the last two weekends. Um, in Laguna Seca, I was first in every practice, and then when qualifying came. Um, I had a puncture, and then I could only get one 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 hot hot lap in um, after that, and it was with with cold tires, so I couldn't really um, make use of qualifying. So had to make my way from the back, and I mean, uh, and the in the weekend ended fine. I started last the second race, and I ended sixth. So. Uh, but I think for this year, a big shock to me was how big the field of USF was. Really? Yeah, I was not expecting um, the USF to be so big, and uh, the Mazda field is really small, too. Um, Indy Lights field, I was expecting that because I knew a lot of people from Europe were coming back, but uh, one of the, the biggest where I was like, oh, um, was that USF was a lot bigger, and, and Pro Mazda was really small. You know, and Pato brings up a great point, and, you know, I'm going to kind of do my last rotation on, on this 
on this side of the discussion, and that is now that we've kind of discussed your guys' surprises this season, JJ, Pato hit it on the head. USF is a big field, yep. and Pro Mazda really wasn't as big of a field as I think a lot of people, I know certainly as big as I was expecting it to be. What's been more of a surprise for you in the overall yep. road to Indy this year? You know, like, like Pato said, I think the, the USF 2000, you know, how big the, the, the field is, that, that shows that there's a lot, of, a lot of talent, a lot of guys coming out of, you know, carts, because that's mm -hmm. your first step, really, right? right? And, uh, you know, you can see that there's a lot of coming up, and I, I wouldn't be surprised in the next few years that a lot of those guys from F2000 start to move up to Pro Mazda, right. and you start seeing that field grow as well. Is that, I mean, is that the only way to get the Pro Mazda field any bigger? Uh, I would say that that's definitely the best way. Right. You know, it's, it's guys coming from karting, going to F2000, and then starting to graduate from that. Um, I just find that there's a lot of young guys right now that need to be in that in that first step. But right. with time, they're going to start graduating to it. Certainly, I think it's everybody. I think would agree that you know, progressing through the ladder the way it's designed, you know, you should never take a ladder and hop a few rungs. Yep. You always want to crawl up it as, as as gradually as you can. Luke. Same thing for you, USF 2000 Pro Mazda. Is that more of a surprise, or does anything else really stick out to you? Um, that's definitely like one of the biggest surprises. I thought you know, Pro Mazda was going to grow. You know, it was pretty big last year, and USF was slightly smaller. And I thought both fields were just going to get bigger and bigger, and it was just going to be super competitive. But um, I think Pro Mazda surprised a lot of people by how small it was. Yeah, and again, that's another part of the discussion that we'll get into a little bit later in the show. But yeah, the surprises this year, I think, have definitely been the USF 2000 field. And JJ, as a driver coach, is that, that has to be a favorable thing for the new young drivers coming into the road to Indy. As their coach, for any of them, I imagine you'd prefer them to be racing in a large field to learn the series Absolutely. and to learn the car. Yep. Absolutely. And I think with the new car, uh, you know, I think every driver wants to go into a season where nobody has a, a leg up on anyone. You know, you're coming into to a car with a narrow package and tires are going to be, um, you know, the same for everybody and nobody's been in it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a driver coming into a season, you want to have that. You don't want to come in, be coming in with guys who've been in a, in a class for two, three years, you know, because that puts you in a disadvantage. So I think that that's going to be an exciting thing to see, you know, just kind of everybody level off a little bit. Yeah, I think I think you're certainly right, and I, I I really am just happy you're here as a driver coach to give us you know that input and that insight with the bigger field, what it's going to do, and what it's going to take to get Pro Mazda. Have any of you guys been surprised? And Pato, I'll start with you. Have any of you been surprised at the quality of racing in Indy Lights, which has been just phenomenal? Yeah, Indy Lights. I knew I knew it from the from the start of the year. I said Indy Lights is going to be a tough one this year, and definitely with all the big names that came and. And a lot, a lot of the guys that returned did really well in the first year. So, so I, I was expecting Indy Lights to be uh, like really heavy and you know in quality and um, and in, in just the racing itself. Uh, JJ, some question for you. And with RC racing in that category, was was the level of competition a surprise to you guys? Um, I don't know if if you, if you would call it a surprise, but I would call it uh, exciting. Right. For me. You know, there you've got. You've got guys that are really, really good. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really aggressive. You can see that there's a lot of natural talent going on there, and uh, everybody wants to win equally. <coughs> they are pushing so hard. They're put you okay there, bud? <laughs> yeah. Something. <Okay. laughs> he just tossed something up. Yeah, it was a hairball. What was that? Anyway, so. No, um, no, no, no. Because no. it, it was something on my in my keyboard, so I blew it away. <laughs> Sure it does. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to watch the races. You know, right. like I said earlier, there's, you know, there are seven guys that can win every time. Right. And uh, uh, one of the things that, that I've noticed throughout the season is that there's been a lot of contact. Uh, yeah. People running each other off the road and, you know, two cars coexisting next to each other next, uh, you know, in a corner is very rare. It's it's tough. It's tough. And it shouldn't be, but it is, but it is right now. And those guys are fighting for a big prize, you know. And, yeah, of course. And, but that's what makes it exciting. You know, we've got a lot of good guys with, and they, they, they're, um, they're the type of drivers who they're not going to budge to each other. No. You know. No, it's, so, uh, can I tell you guys what my biggest surprise this season has been? Please do. Uh, it's how deep. Pato Awards V-neck is right now. It is. I mean, you can't even see it on the screen. I mean, how far does it go? Pato, a, we don't even know how far the V goes. Oh. There it is. Well, he's he's exaggerating I don't it. I know if I want to throw up or I like, commend <laughs> him for that. Well, we don't, if we're going to talk about Pato's V-neck, we always, whenever we have Luke Gavin on the show, wardrobe is something we always end up discussing. And Luke, just like when I sat down with you at the brewery in uh, Indianapolis, you're showing a, then you were showing a lot of ankle because you had some long, you had some 
Yeah. Not so long pants on. I know I'm doing the same today, unfortunately. But uh, that's what happens when you get come here from he, the flood. He uses really tight pants. Yeah, he's showing a lot of knee right now. He's showing a lot of knee. A lot of knee. Can we get a camera on that? Because that is a look that uh, is aggressive. I mean, not I, everybody I can pull it off, you know. It's hot in Florida. It's humid, as we were discussing it's earlier. Not, is, yeah, exactly. Is that a look to combat the humidity here? It is. You know, I'm from Australia where it's really hot. And here it's even hotter, I think, hum humidity-wise. It's just out of control, so I have to, you know, get some air on these legs. <laughs> some people are looking to get air on their wings. I know, it, it is yeah. weird that we're yeah, talking about this and we're knees. like yeah. staring at his legs. We, uh, <laughs> we, like to, we like to have fun here at Road to Indy TV after hours or in studio. I don't know what we're calling this. <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep moving here, guys. Uh, I think it's a good time to go to Good, Bad, and the Ugly. They're trying to show me signs and I can't, I'm not sure, so we're just going to go to Good, Bad, and Ugly now. Good. Um, and Luke, this is where we, we talked a little bit about something that happened earlier that Pato hit on. Yeah. But guys, just so you understand, the premise of this part of the segment, Pato, JJ, and uh, Luke, is we're gonna discuss things in all three of the categories that have been good, yep. things that have been not so good or bad, and then things that have just been downright ugly. And I've already gone after Pato's V-neck, so that's off the table, unfortunately. We can't use that anymore, okay? Guys, we, look, he doesn't even know what we're talking about. Um, so let's, let's get going here. We'll start with USF 2000, the good. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind just for me, this season has been Victor Franzoni's season. I mean, that guy from Arms Up Motorsports, they've just been hitting it solidly. And he's been in the category for a long time. He's been knocking down podium results, and he's still in the hunt. Uh, he's obviously not where he'd want to be with those Cape boys right now, but he's had a really good season. I think I consider that one of the good performances of 2016. And when we get input from you guys, this can be anything. This can be, you can use yourself as a reference. You can use a pass you saw, um, a, a particular race. Uh, even just an event weekend, something that comes to mind. So like I said, one of my really first goods of 2016, there's been lots of them, Victor Franzoni. You know, maybe one of the little engines that could, but Luke, same side of the token, you're very much in the same position, I feel like, as Victor is. Do you have a good? And I'm looking for something, maybe not your season particularly, but you can reference your year if you want. Can you think of something good that's really stuck out in USF 2000 this year, the category you compete in? Um, I would... You know, I'm not, I would have to say, you know, I'd have to sort of reference myself a little bit because, you know, when I came in to this year, um, like I had, I had no money and I, I, I didn't have a team to sort of go with at all. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks prior, Jay approached me and we sort of made it happen. And that's, you know, really like one of the biggest things for me this year. Like it, it's not even about, you know, having the good results, it was just about being in the car and making sure I was, you know, right there in the mix. All right, I understand that. JJ, I'm gonna go to Pato because I know you'll be good for like kind of an overview of the season. I wanna get Pato's from a driver perspective. So Pato, <laughs> first question to you is, something good about you, the USF 2000 championship that's, that's stuck out to you. You've raced in it, now you're above it in Pro Mazda. What's something that you've been able to see from the paddock this year that's really impressed you about USF 2000? Um. Well, how I mentioned earlier, I guess the just the overall view of the of the championship. A lot of people are looking into coming to USF 2000, so I think that's really good for the series. Um, something I think is is good now that uh, the series kind of um, it kind of all closed up. Um, it all closed up in championship standings, and everybody just started to get more in the mix. So I think that's really good for the championship. So now there's there's actually a fight in the championship. Um, and I can relate to that because that happened in Promaza too. Yeah, the uh, championship fight certainly has clinched up a lot. We talked about the Cape boys, Anthony Martin and Parker Thompson have been dominant this year. But again, Victor Franzoni, by knocking out those consistent results, is there. And it is a good, close championship fight right now, heading into the final weekend at Mazda Raceway. So JJ, you know, the good in the Cooper Tires USF 2000 championship. What's one of the things that's really stood yeah, out? Yeah, one of the things that I that I think it's important to note is the fact that you know the Cape has all been the Capes have always been strong throughout you know the last you know how, how God knows how many years. Sixth consecutive team championship Correct. this year. Um, and every once in a while you see a team challenging, but this year there has been four teams 
you know, or three things challenging them. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got J Motorsports with Luke here that, you know, have been on pole, have been a contender right. for, for wins. Um, same thing with Pabs and, uh, and Arms Up now right. with Frenzoni. So I think that's a, a really good thing to see. You know, these guys are taking the fight to them. And the parity. Yeah, perhaps. absolutely. You know, you want, you want to have that. Right? right. Even though Cape's able to win another team championship, you still see guys. Absolutely. Because yeah. when the season kicked off at St. Pete, Pabs swept both those races. Yeah, and last year was the same thing with Jake Aidson and, and uh, you, know, you know, taking the fight to them. Right. And, uh, you know, and especially now with the new car coming in, you've got, you know, new teams coming right. in and it's all level playing field and it's going to be exciting to see. So we'll now move to the not so good side, the bad side of USF 2000 and I'm going to end on Luke. So Pato, maybe something from USF 2000 that you've been able to notice, something as a former driver that, that has not been extremely impressive. Uh, that's going on in USF 2000 right now. Maybe someone's season, maybe a driver's personal year, one race. Get, does anything come out to mind in a bad for USF 2000 this year? Bad, honestly, <laughs> I don't know. I, nothing comes to mind, honestly. I think the year has been has been like any other racing year where there's ups and downs. Um, but in the bad, I, I mean, I would have to name Thompson, where he started off really strong as I did, and then kind of just went, uh, 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 and then he got caught up in the championship. So you're referring to Parker Thompson, one of the Cape drivers, as maybe not having the best season as you thought he would? Well, I'm not, not, not having the, the end of the season as I guess he wanted. Well, that's, that's a good point. Coming off mid-Ohio, Parker really ran on some bad luck, a puncture in the first race, and then two second places. Not really a bad weekend to say, but he comes in leading the championship battle. Now he's about 20 points behind. So I understand that. That's a good point. Uh, JJ, one of the one of the downsides to USF 2000 presented by Cooper this year, maybe. Yeah, to me, you know, I, I I'm gonna go to to look on this one because I got the, the opportunity. Jay brought me in to um, to work with them and, and help Cameron Das. Well, actually, they came with Cameron, and I got to work with with Luke a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that just kind of you know, you see a guy, guy with, like Luke with a lot of talent and every race, you know, uh, at the end of every race weekend, I, I asked him, I asked him just before we started the show was, you know, are you in for the next one? Are you in right. for the next one? Right. You know, so I think that, you know, th there's a lot of guys like Luke with a lot of talent and just struggling to get the fundings, you know. Yeah. So to me, um, having Luke have to go through that struggle with somebody that could potentially be a, a championship contender this year. But, you know, this does take a toll on, on, on getting you to the next step. And so I'll say if anything, it would be how, how difficult he has had to work to be in a car. It would probably be my it's, a, it's a necessary evil in yeah. racing, as we yeah, all can yeah, agree, all the it, yeah. financial side, and it can come up and bite you. So Luke, JJ kind of points to you as, as one, of the, one of the rough Sorry. stories, one of the bad. <laughs> and, and he doesn't mean it as a bad story yeah. as you, but the storyline for you has yeah. not been great. What, you know, do you agree with that? Do you see any other things in USF 2000 this year that have not been great? Um, yeah, I, I definitely agree. My season has been a bit uh, up and down and there's been some sort of bad components to it uh, that is, you know, not necessarily bad, but bad that- It hasn't been that. great. It hasn't been great. So that, I think, spills us into the ugly. And when I saw that you were our guest for the show, I thought, boy, this is gonna be tough to bring this up, but Pato kind of knocked it down already for me. <laughs> One of the ugly things that happened this season, and, and we don't really mean it was ugly as it was, you know, disgusting or anything, but man, my heart broke for you sitting in the in the media building in Indianapolis when you had that top time in qualifying at the Grand Prix, yeah, and then you didn't anymore. That yeah, to me that is was... one of the things that sticks out as the ugly for 2016. Yeah, explain that, and then it, I'm sure you agree or if you have another ugly moment, go ahead. <laughs> um, no, I definitely agree. That was definitely an uh, ugly and heartbreaking sort of moment for me. But uh, we were told in, um, in driver's meeting that uh, the, the checkered flag, if we blew it, would, uh, would be, all our times would be deleted. Well, and explain that, because to me, it confused me. Because the checkered flag, was it waving at the start finish line at the yard of bricks or was it waving earlier than that? No, it, it waves in, I think, turn 10 or between 9 and 10. Right, right before pit entry, right? Right before pit entry. And a lot of drivers did complain that we couldn't see it. And on that sort of lap, I, um, I wasn't informed that we had gone check it. And I didn't see the flag because it just wasn't in my, uh, in my vision where I was looking towards the corner. And uh, it turns out I missed it and didn't come into pits. Um, but I mean, three three other drivers did do it. A lot of people had been doing it through, throughout the weekend, and it you know it had been moved. And 
uh, a lot of people thought it was a pretty harsh penalty. It Consi considering if, if you crashed and threw out a red flag and caused probably more time loss than, you know, uh, blowing a jacket and doing another lap, you would get one time deleted, so it's... Yeah, the, yeah. the entire time was disallowed after qualifying on the pole position and uh, you raced to a 20th position finishing that first Grand Prix race and then you were able to put on the podium yeah. in the second race. So you got out of there, not as bad as a lot of people thought you would, but still a really tough weekend. Yeah, it was. I mean, we started in 26th and, you know, I made some awesome passes to get up to about 7th and then we had a, um, a, an electrical ground come loose and so I had to fall all the way back to 20th. And then I started 7th for the second race and was able to get up to 3rd. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, it was pretty up and down, but, you know, we showed a lot of pace and everyone in the, inside the paddock saw that we had the pace. JJ, something ugly, maybe that's happened, 2016 USF 2000 championship? Yeah, I mean, I, I got to go with the, with the same thing. That game. was I mean, tough. I, I, <laughs> I, was, I got to talk to him afterwards and everything, and, and, and for those of you at home that don't know, um, in the uh, uh, race weekends that we are with IndyCar, they do, we do have the start finish line, which is right on the middle, in, in, in the front straight. Right. But the timing loop happens uh, before pit in. Right. So that you can cross the line, get your time in, and then you can come into the pits without doing a complete, not, extra you know, lap. Without completing another lap. Right. And, uh, and that's where the, the checker was coming out. So I think it was, I thought it was pretty rash as well. I've never seen a, you know, your, all of your time to be disallowed for simply just running one lap. That doesn't count anyways. So, um, anyways, that's that's my, my my real ugly one there. Yeah, it was it, it was, was tough, tough for sure. To swallow for it sure. was tough for sure. Pato kind of closes off anything necessarily uh, ugly that jumps out to you with the with the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship this year. Anything you can think of? Uh, honestly, the only one that came out to mind was when uh, when Luke lost his pole lap. <laughs> There you go, folks. The, the ugliest moment of 2016 does, in fact, yeah. belong to J Motorsports and our good friend, Luke Gabin. So let's keep on rolling here. We'll move to Pro Mazda. One of the good things, again, I think of is a, a friend of mine uh, from the state of Colorado, Will Owen, for Yunkos Racing. He's been able to get through all of 2016, to my knowledge, without wrecking a single race car, without having a race car brought back on the hook. He has finished, to my knowledge, again, every lap of the 2016. Well, that ought to do it, huh? What's that? <laughs> now, now that you Yeah, mentioned. exactly. Now, now when we go to Laguna Seca. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully the curse doesn't befall my friend Will Owen. But, I mean, it's an impressive feat to finish every lap of a season really in the is. car that you've been given. Yeah. Uh, that's, to me, that's one of the really good things that sticks out as far as a performance yeah. in 2016. JJ, something maybe in the uh, Pro Mazda Championship presented by Cooper Tires? Uh, I would, you have to say that I think the good thing is, uh, you know, the dominance of the Palfrey team. Oh, you know, man. With, uh, with these two guys, um, you know, there's uh, uh, maybe a magic potion that goes around um, that uh, was <laughs> given to Pato at first, and then <laughs> now Aaron, uh, you know, <laughs> has it, and we still have uh, you know one more weekend to go, so maybe that one will be. <laughs> we'll see if uh, see what happens there. But a triple header. A triple header, but you know, uh, for 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 both of those guys, seasons have a tendency of going up and down, right. and uh, you know, going to the last one out, they're both on the. Um, on equal playing field, I think. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, the, the, the dominance of Team Pelfrey was kind of uh, really, really exciting to see, especially with these, you know, with, with Pato and Aaron both. Well, let's ask him since we've got the man right here. Yeah. Pato Award, is there a secret potion inside the Team Pelfrey cars <laughs> that has made you guys so, I mean, you guys have, up until, up until mid-Ohio, when Jammin stepped in, I mean, you guys pretty much had everything. Aaron scored win one at St. Pete, and then you rattled off six, and then Aaron got back on it. I mean, why are the Team Pelfrey cars so quick in Pro Mazda? Um, honestly, they are... They're pretty much the same as they were last year. Just this year, um, Tom, uh, the, the engineer, Tom Knapp, he really um, made sure everything on the cars was perfect. Um, and I think you can, you can notice, I mean, everything just on the cars is just put on perfect. Um, but I mean, there's, it, it's really not something that, oh, we, we have something <coughs> different. Not really, we, we, I think what, what is just really big uh, for us this year is that we really have the race pace. Um, we can pull out a quick lap, but we really have the race pace. Um, and that's why I think the, the race wins and, and we're so dominant. I mean, that's certainly a part of it. You got to be quick in qualifying, but you got to be quick in the race as well. 
Uh, Luke, do you have anything to add on the Pro Mazda side, or am I sticking with these two guys for the rest of Pro Mazda? Yeah, I mean, I think the battle between, the teammate battle between uh, Pato and Aaron is it's been entertaining. It, yeah, it is. It is for sure. I mean, you have such two different drivers yeah. in the deep V over here. Yeah. And then Mr. Wisconsin, <laughs> who actually will be joining us in show number two a little bit later on. But you have just two very different drivers. So we, we go from the good now to the bad a little bit. And in Pro Mazda, we've all hit on it already. And I don't know if it's worth talking about much more. Uh, it's been the, the field size, unfortunately. I think that's been kind of the bad. Does everyone agree with me on that? That's kind of been the bad surprise yeah. this season. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And I mean, it's unfortunate, you know, but as JJ hit on the USF 2000 program is designed to spit drivers out into Pro Mazda. Yeah. Uh, and so we will see what happens there. The field did gain one driver when TJ Fisher moved up from USF 2000 into Pro Mazda. And uh, it's helped, but it yep. certainly needs a few more drivers. Yeah, I think we would all agree. Know, it, it goes, through, it goes through, um, through waves, you know. Sometimes you have a lot of guys coming out of karting going to F2000, and then maybe that will stop a little bit and it'll populate the, the Pro Mazda. And, it's just how it goes. Just this year, we haven't been there. I, I certainly. But you, you know what? I have a feeling uh, the Mazda field is going to be quite a lot bigger in Laguna. Really? Yeah. I think, you know, we've had like 10, 12, uh, but I think Laguna is going to be a good 15, 15, 16 car field, actually. I think it's pretty, you know, realistic uh, you know opinion or or, or idea that i think uh, in laguna since um there's a like a pro Mazda championship in california and i know some some people that are gonna go and they're gonna try it out for the first time uh so i think we can see a better field for laguna sega that would be awesome honestly because it looks like such a great car it looks like such a fun car one to drive and two i think they race well if you saw any onboard footage from mid ohio when it got a little slick out there in that in that second rain race i mean it looked like an absolute they look like a blast to drive and i just wish the field were a little bit bigger to see more entertaining racing yeah i agree with that. uh and then sort of the ugly and this is tough when you have to call out a driver in the bad category but we had no problems doing it with luke so i guess we'll have no problems doing it here and this is tough everybody's gonna call me crazy on the ugly here because he just rattled off three straight wins in Ohio. But I don't think Nico Jamin's season in Pro Mazda has been what anybody expected it to be. A big part of that is thanks to our boy Pato here and his teammate and Team Pelfrey. But boy, after Jamin wins the USF 2000 last year, I for one thought he'd be right up there fighting for the championship in Pro Mazda. Uh, JJ, do you disagree with me on that? I mean, do you feel the same way? Uh... Yeah, I would expect him to, to you know, be, be a contender right from the beginning. Um, him and Jake both. And uh, unfortunately, these guys just, you know, dominated, dominated right from the start. Um, it's good to see them coming back now. Um, I don't know if, um, if it was anything to do with uh, just the teams, one having their, their stuff together and the other not so much until got to mid-Ohio or if the drivers took a little bit to adapt to the car. Right. Uh, but certainly Aaron didn't have any problem um, adapting to the car from the USF 2000. He was nope. right on pace with, exactly. uh, uh, with Pato uh, coming in the second year. So, uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's difficult to say why, but yeah, I certainly expected him to be there a little bit sooner. Well, and Cape Motorsports is just so funny. They are so successful in the USF 2000 yeah, program. Success on everything they've done. Six consecutive team championships in the in the Cooper Tires USF 2000 championship, powered by Mazda, and it's not like they're slouches yep. in Pro Mazda by any stretch. But it's just so darn hard to keep up with, with Pato and Aaron and Team Pelfrey. So, Pato, Nico's season for me is kind of one of the, the big surprises, maybe the ugly. Do you have anything that sticks out as far as, you know, the ugly for you and Pro Mazda as a whole in 2016? Um, I, I, I would just say the ugly is because the, um, there was a few drivers leaving. I would say that that would be the ugly part of it because uh, Gris left and then Aitzen left and um, that's, that's what stands out to me that is the ugliest, honestly. Well, that's a good point because, again, when the field's small to begin with and you lose a driver or two up to Indy Lights or whatever it may be, that certainly doesn't help matters whatsoever. Uh, so I think that, that's a really good point by Paulo. We'll move now to the Indy Lights Championship presented by Cooper Tires. This is obvious, but man, one of the great things this year, the good for me has just been the level of competition. Oh, yeah. I mean, what do we see? Six different winners, I think, in the first six races. Yep. And then, you know, Veach shows back up late in the season, at, well, halfway through the season at Road America. The level of competition has just been phenomenal in Indy Lights, and it's where you expect to see it with the series' best drivers yeah. in the best equipment. Luke, 
I know from USF 2000, you have goals and dreams of getting to Indy Lights one day. What's been the thing that really stands out to you about the, the good in Indy Lights this season? You know, it has to be the level of competition. It's pretty crazy. You've seen sort of, uh, you've seen drivers like Kyle Kaiser, who's been in for Mazda, and then goes to uh, Indy Lights and can fight with champions of F3 right. and people coming off GP3 and, uh, you know, straight from Europe. So it shows that sort of, you know, Pro Mazda and USF 2000 is, is the place to be in terms of, you know, building uh, your driving uh, capabilities to run with the best in, that come from Europe and eventually Indy Cup. So maybe even one of the good you could say it's not even just been the level of competition, but it's been the level of talent. Yeah. When you have guys like you know, Felix Rosenquist, an F3 champion. And you have these guys coming from all over the world to come race this category. JJ, the good in Indy Lights this year. Yeah, definitely that. That and, and the fact that not only are different drivers winning, there are different teams that are taking these guys to the to the top step. Great you know? point. And uh, so that's that's really exciting to see. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I love watching the racing. You know, it, it, these guys are absolutely, you know, so it, they're, they're driving harder with against each other than you see in a lot of the top level stuff, you know, and. Uh, Certainly for open wheel too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's exciting racing. You know, once, uh, once things get kind of settled in during the race, it kind of becomes a little bit monotone, you know, because it's difficult to get close with right. the arrow. Uh, in these the downforce in these cars, but uh, you know the starts restarts and uh, how they're taking oh, advantage man. of that You know you you have to be that aggressive to take you know get the whole shot on a, on a start for example and and manage the race from there But uh, yeah, that's, it's been that's great the good for sure. Pato the good for you in 2016 with Indy Lights. I think I think the good a good is um, We can also see it good or bad um, but I think good is like to see the top three drivers Santi uh, Jones and uh, Stoneman. We saw the the battle between them, and it pretty much it still is carrying on. Um, but now more a bit Santi and, and Jones. But um, the the battle between those three drivers is really entertaining for all the people that are watching. It's it's been very fun to watch. Uh, the bat on the other side of that, unfortunately, has been. You know, and I don't mind the close racing. I don't mind a little bit of bumping and, and banging, but in open wheel, it's not as looked uh, as well upon as it is in other forms of racing. And one of the bad things that's come out of the season is the probation that we saw race yeah. director Tony Cotman put those drivers on. Uh, the top three in the championship standings for a little while were all under probation. They, they still are, they, they're, they've shuffled themselves in the point standings, but probation coming down and Tony Cotman and IL race staff saying, hey, we're watching you guys very closely now. That's been kind of one of the, the disappointing things this season is that the racing has gotten to that level. Uh, Luke, something bad for you with Indy Lights? Uh, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I would definitely put that in a category, category of bad that, you know, the racing is so tight and there's been a bit of contact, but it, you know, it's also a bit of good, I think, that it is that close. Right. Um, and that it, I guess it, it's bad that it comes down to that, but it's also good in a way. Um, but I think it's cool to see someone like uh, Santi can, you know, build a trend that he can come into the season from Pro Master and be competitive. Right. You know, uh, just like Spencer and you know, past other champions. I think that, uh, you know, the, 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 the crashing and the, the pushing people off the road and the, you know, these guys racing hard. Right. They, you know, you look at guys in IndyCar, they're racing just as hard, but there is room. They're giving each other room. Um, I think at that point, you know, when you come to the, you know, there's a lot in play here. These guys need to win. They need to have the scholarship to move on. Exactly. And, um, you know, and it's all about themselves. Very, very, very selfish way to go about it. But you have to. You, you have know, to. You have to race that hard. Um, and then when you get to IndyCar, for example, you're going to be racing with the same people for a long time. So yes. you need to have that kind of respect, you know, and that. Uh, and the like, raceability. Exactly. And I think I, I just wish that there was a little bit of, a little bit more of that in the Indy Lights. Maybe more patience? A little bit more patient, but on the same token, if you take, if you have too much patience, you're going to be taken True. advantage of. So, True. You know, you, you, you got to stand up for yourself and that's what everybody's doing, but they're right. doing it at the very limit and yeah. it's to a point. But that's what makes it beautiful. It just doesn't quite work out. I, I agree with you. The, yeah. the temperaments and the patience, but you're, you're dancing on a yeah. knife side. And, and Cotman have, has done a great job where he's given you enough. It's kind of like giving you enough ro rope to hang yourself. Yes. And that's, uh, exactly. My life's motto, JJ. <laughs> My <laughs> life's <laughs> motto. So, you know, that's, uh, that's where we're at right now with us. Pato, something bad that's happened, 2016 Indy Lights, anything come to mind? Yeah, I think, as you mentioned, the, the probation that they, the, the front three drivers got into, 
Um, but I mean, other than that, I think the racing has been great and uh, the entertainment to everybody that is watching, even the driver from, from Mazda and USF, it's been really, really good. Uh, the ugly, quickly, I, I can think of right off the top of my head, and I, I hate this. It, this, in my opinion, has just been almost purely bad luck for this driver, but the ugly for 2016 for me is Team Pelfrey IL driver Juan Pedrojita's season. I mean, that guy does not seem like he can catch a break anywhere we go. He was so close to winning or being in contention to win the Freedom 100, and that restart was crazy, and he, he almost got thrown into pit lane at, at almost full speed. I, I mean, he ran into bad luck in Toronto with Dean. He's just had a tough season. Ugly for Indy Lights this year, Luke. Anything uh, coming up? I would definitely say Stoneman at uh, Toronto. You know, not getting uh, not getting out of pit lane. Not getting out of pit lane. That that's got to be tough. You know, being right there in the championship hunt and not even being able to start the race. That's a great one. Andretti's Dean Stoneman having mechanicals that kept him on pit lane the entire second race in Toronto. JJ, the ugly man. I you know I've. Um, some of these guys are fighting on the autograph session. <laughs> it's getting heated. I'm not going to say any names, but you know, some <laughs> of them. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like this is some, this right? is some exclusive Pato, you stuff you should me? know like, about. What the heck, right? Oh, I think it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Explain, I just, fighting I, in the autograph line. <laughs> there's been some uh, words changed in the autograph session between drivers that uh, I thought was a bit unnecessary. But, yeah, also awesome, I'm, I'm with Pato on that, but... Uh, it's, it's it's definitely been, interesting. Some TMZ level yeah, stuff here at Road go, You should do some more but research you know, yourself. I think also, <laughs> um, uh, something that, I, that surprised me uh, um, that might fit into like the bad category or ugly is uh, Neil Albarico's season. That's a good point. That's fair. And I and, and he did so well last year in Mazda that a lot of people would expect him to be um, I, at the front, like fighting with Santi yeah, and everything. Absolutely. But he's been struggling. I mean, that's a great point. Neil's season has not been what anybody I thought imagined it would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think everybody expected a little bit more, but uh, it's been unfortunate, certainly, to see. Those two Carlin cars with Ed Jones and, yeah. and Sorales have been lightning quick. Yeah. But uh, Neil's just been a little bit off the ball, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe it's just taken him a little bit to get used to the car, you know, coming from from, from uh, Pro Mazda. Some, so maybe his solid drive will take Rookie a year. It would be nice to see him come back another, you know, for next year and see what, you know, what he can do. I certainly hope so. His, uh, Working with Rising Star yeah. Racing, hopefully they can work to get right. him back in that car. So we're going to kind of head to our last, one of our last segments here, and that is, you know, drivers away from the racetrack, drivers out of the helmet, driver coaches away from the headset perhaps maybe. Uh, and that's just when we get to know you guys a little bit more as, as people, as humans. Now we got Pato Award here uh, coming to us live from San Antonio, Texas in what seems to be his trophy room. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful trophy room, Pato. Uh, I'm sure that you've enjoyed earning all of those amazing trophies, but when you're not winning big shiny trophies and hats like we see over your shoulder back there, what else are you doing? Because you, you're a very you're a very active person away from the racetrack. What do you do when you're not winning trophies? Um, Tell us. Those are all fifth place trophies back there, aren't hey, they? Hey, no, these are in, super national in, wins. Yeah, uh huh. In Mexico, <laughs> if you guys don't know, in Mexico they give trophies all the way to fifth place. Wow. So. I should go race in Mexico. <laughs> as a as a Mexican uh, hand yeah, gesture. But, uh, <laughs> when I'm not at the racetrack, um, my schedule uh, is really, especially this month. Um, is really training intense. Um, I I work out two or three times a day, and I eat food and I go to sleep. That's oh well, I and I have to food. and I have to do my my schoolwork like a couple hours a day. But um, that's not my every problem. every that's day, like when I'm not in in the race, like that, that's pretty much what it consists of. Well, we're glad to hear you're eating, Pato. Yeah. I really am happy to hear that. It's good to keep eating. I was going to say at the end of this, for 69 cents a day, you can donate to help Pato Award eat. Yeah. But it sounds like he's got the whole eating food thing under he control. Does. I'm really yes, happy to I was having my breakfast. Yeah, you were eating during this. <laughs> we uh, we heard, we didn't see you uh, with the banana. We, we heard there might be a banana as a part of breakfast. We didn't see that, unfortunately. No, no, I had, I had three scrambled eggs with one piece of wheat toast. Wow. That do you know what I had for breakfast this morning, Pato? Pancakes? Unfortunately not. Two slices of very cold hotel leftover pizza. Yeah. And he didn't want to share either. 
because I wanted to have a bite and he didn't want to give it to me. You don't mess with a wannabe yeah. TV host. I have seen him eat a banana whole before. Pato? Pato? Yeah. I'm sure the crowd would You've seen it too, right? Seen Haven't you seen him eat a banana whole before? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sure Did he's you pretty not... good at that. Yeah. Let's be careful with the gestures on camera there, big guy. <laughs> JJ, away from the racetrack, when you got that headset off, you uh, your sock game is strong, like yeah, we just learned about. You. What, uh, what else are you doing when you're not shopping um, for socks? I also eat food. You also eat food. Um, as most of you probably do. Um, and uh, But I don't exercise as much as him. I have the strength of a dead rhino, if you will. <laughs> and uh, So what I do away from the track is I try to spend every waking moment with my wife and my little girl. She is, uh, Gabriela is a, year, a little over a year old now. And uh, she's starting to walk and, uh, you know, always busy with, you know, with being on the road. I do. The indie, the road to indie stuff, right. as well as uh, the prototype stuff with uh, with him. So, okay. So very li limited time at home. So every time that I can, I want to be doing things and taking them out to do fun stuff and swimming lessons and whatever. So, you know, I've so yeah. very very tied down at I home just, when, you, when yeah, you are there. I, I want to. I want to be at home. I want to be with the girls and uh, you know spend as much time as I. When can. When you're at home chilling, dude, you gotta get some of this. <laughs> what is Whoa. that? Whoa. What is that That's thing? That's a sneaky plug. Yeah, good job, man. Good job. He's, They'll be proud of you. He's the best mineral water. Ever? Oh, yeah. Ever? He just, Can you yes. send us some? No, no, no. Yeah. Go, go to Walmart and go to Ethnic Goods, where they have all the Mexican stuff. Why don't you just send it in the mail? Yeah, why don't you send it to us Seriously. so we can Or how about bring it to a race, perhaps? Okay. I think we'll all yeah. be hanging yeah. out together come soon. Come to my tent and you can, you can try. <laughs> well, Mr. Australia, let's hear you explain some things with your twang on it. What are you doing? I know I've asked you this. The, the, the kangaroos, we talked about this in Indianapolis. Yeah. You're always down there hopping in kangaroos' pouches and, and riding around when you're back home down south? Yeah, yeah, I do that a lot. It's um, very marsupial. I actually it. don't eat. As you can sort of see. <laughs> we got yeah. two people here who do eat and one who doesn't. Eat. Need food. I don't actually eat. Um, no, but I work at uh, Anderson uh, Karting, Anderson Race Team. Uh, right. With I their, know them. With that karting team, yeah. We were just down in California a couple weeks ago and I, I saw helped you. them. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always around there wrenching on carts and in the shop doing some stuff, you know, spannering away. You're quite the music, musical fan. Yeah, I like my music. Uh, and to perform it. I'm definitely a fan, and it stops right about there. I don't think so. Uh, no, for sure. Twice on this show we've had you singing. Yeah. Well, or rapping. Yeah. I'm, it's not good, but it, I hey, guess. Man. It, hey, I man. I still remember your rap song. My name is Luke Gavin. <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> said 2010. <laughs> Here's the deal. I don't know. I'm not sure about JJ's uh, vocal musical abilities, but I'm gonna bet you that just looking at the guy and his cool haircut and his socks, I bet he could. I bet he could. What do they call it when you get on the cardboard box and you spin oh, around? Oh, break dance. Break no, dance. I have one talent. What? But JJ's and one talent cut. only. What? And that what? is. What's your talent? I can clap with one hand. Okay. Well, obviously you have to do that now. <laughs> That's the only talent that I got. Can you do that again? Yep, I can. <laughs> That's it. I now you have two rap. hands. See? Well, yeah. drivers and driver it coaches. Was better than trying to break dance. Away from the racetrack. Yeah. We'll get you, maybe when this show's over, <laughs> we'll get you down on the floor and see if you can spin around. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Coming up, we've got another show in about a week. We're going to have uh, Anderson Promotions' Michelle Anderson Kish here in studio with us. We're also going to have a guy you know pretty well. He's on your shirt right now. You want to you give him a little bit of plug? Jay? Jay is going to be here in studio with us for our next off the road show that we've got coming up. And then after that, folks, we get on a plane and we head to upstate New York for the Indy Lights race up at Watkins Glen, a historic racetrack up there, the first weekend of September. And then right after that, we fly all the way to the West Coast. That's going to be a quick turnaround. And it's Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca for the Mazda Weekend, the championship finale for the Mazda Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires. We're going to have the Cooper Tires USF 2000 championship powered by Mazda, the Pro Mazda championship presented by Cooper Tires, which this man is fighting for a championship for, in for. And we're going to have the Indy Lights Championship presented by Cooper Tires wrapping up as well. So the end of the season is about to get really busy, guys. Any, uh, any thoughts heading into the last couple weeks here, JJ? Nah, I just wish all the, all the guys that are contending for the championship good luck. And uh, we'll see what happens. And to thank everybody for uh, having me over. Really appreciate it. JJ, we appreciate it. Pato, heading into those last couple weeks, buddy, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> he, wants to add another, he wants to add another fifth place trophy to that collection over there. No. <laughs> no. He, it looks like he ran out of Topo Chico for It's going to be the big one that says 2016 Pro Mazda Champion. Well, I, I, I hope 
to see it. If you get that, we're gonna do another Skype interview with you and I want it to be like levitating above your bed or something, held up by a mountain of Topo Chico. He's oh like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Gavin, it's been an exciting USF 2000 championship. Are you ready to end it? Uh, I, I wish it could go on longer so I could get a better opportunity to win the championship, but <laughs> you know, I hope to just close out the season uh, with a good spot on the podium. It will be exciting when we head to Maz Raceway at Laguna Sega. Guys, that'll do it for the first episode of Maz Road Indy TV, off the road, in studio. Again, live here from Tampa, Florida. Guys, we really appreciate everybody coming and hanging out with us. Pato Award from Team Pelfrey. Pato, thank you for the time. Uh, I really do appreciate you sticking with us. Jonathan, George, JJ, thanks a bunch for coming. You've been a great Happy. insight, and I appreciate you. And uh, Luke Gavin, man, best of luck as we head to those last thank couple you. races, and thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. All right, again, for everybody here at Road to Indy TV, I'm Tony Laporta. It's been a real Gucci time. You didn't think I'd get it in. That's your Urban Dictionary word of the week, folks. We've been having a Gucci time here with, really with Pato Ward, JJ, and uh, Luke Gavin. For everybody at Road to Indy TV, I'm Tony Laporta. We'll see you guys down the road.